Number 69, the data above were taken for the decomposition of KMNO4 by ignition, which liberates oxygen and leaves a solid residue. The experimental mass ratio is. So this is not something I think you'll see on the more recent tests, experimental mass ratio. But for the purposes of this question, I think if you look at the choices, you might get an idea of what to do. We want to know basically what is the ratio of the leftover residue to the original amount of stuff that there was. And so to do this, let's go ahead and actually find what is the mass of the KMNO4 and then the mass of the residue. And then basically we're gonna put one over the other and then we're good to go. So we know this thing uh, when it's empty has a mass of 38.913. So when we add the KMNO4 to the mass, we get a higher mass. And so if we subtract these, we'll be able to find what is the mass of the KMNO4 added? So, doing a little bit of subtractions here. So I get 0.985 grams of KMNO4. So that is the total that I start with before I do the, the, the heating, before I burn it. And, or I guess before I, I guess I'm not burning it, but before I liberate the oxygen by heating it. So that's gonna be on the bottom of my fraction because that's the starting point. And so that gets rid of these guys. And so now on the top, I need the mass of the residue left over. So now I'm gonna do my 39.773. And from that, I'm gonna subtract again, 38.913 to see how much of my residue is left after I've burned off the oxygen. So zero, six, and so I'll get 0 0.860, so my fraction would be 0 0.860 over 0.985, and that's C. Again, I wouldn't worry about this question. I don't think you'll see it on more modern tests. Number 70, to find the concentration of a solution of a base by titration with solution of an acid, which of the following represents the minimum data needed, assuming that the titration has been carried to the proper endpoint and that the equation for the reaction is known? We know we want to find the concentration of a solution of a base. So we're looking to find MB. And if you think about the equation that we use in titrations, what is it? You need MAVA equals MBVB. And this basically tells you what you're going to need in order for the calculation to work. You're going to need the molarity of the acid that you're titrating with. You'll need the volume that of acid that you would use to get to the end point. You would need the volume of the base that you started with. And so with those three values, you'll then be able to solve with this equation to find the molarity of the base. And so we need all of these. This is our VA, this is our VB, and our MA. And so therefore, the answer is all three, choice E. When the equation above is balanced, how many grams of water will be produced when one mole of CrO2 minus is formed? So first, let's, ba let's balance this. I've got one Cr, one Cr. I've got, let's see, I'll do the H's first. I've got three, four H's on the left, so I'll need to put a two here to get two, uh, four H's on the right. Now what about my oxygens? I've got three, four oxygens on the left, one, two, three, four oxygens on the right, so I should be balanced. I've got, I'm producing one mole of CrO2, so that means by the ratio, I'm producing two moles of H2O. And so, it is, let's see, 18 grams per mole. So how many grams of water would be formed? Well, it's two moles times 18 grams per mole times that mole, molar mass. And so I get 36 grams. And so it looks like 71 is D. Which of the following statements concerning fluorine and chlorine is false? So. Fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine. That is true. Fluorine is the most electronegative. And so that is true. We can get rid of A. The atomic radius of fluorine is less than that of chlorine. Yes, remember, as you go down a group, your, mat, your radius increases, your atomic radius. So since fluorine is above chlorine, fluorine is going to have a smaller radius. That is true. Fluorine is a stronger oxidizing agent than chlorine. Again, also true. Both of these are oxidizing agents in that they are being reduced or they tend to be reduced. So they tend to gain electrons. They tend to gain um, electrons to become F minus and Cl minus. And in that process of gaining electrons, of being reduced, they are also oxidizing something that they are taking the electrons from. So 
because again, fluorine is more electronegative, it's more active, more reactive as a nonmetal because it's in that upper right corner. Again, yes, fluorine is a stronger oxidizing agent. Both fluorine and chlorine commonly exist in positive and negative oxidation states. It is possible for chlorine to be positive. Not common, I wouldn't say. I mean, I guess, how do you define common? But regardless of that, fluorine is never going to be positive, or at least not commonly, for sure. So D is false. So D looks like it's going to be the answer. And just checking E, fluorine and chlorine are diatomic. Yes, so these are going to be F2 and Cl2 at you know, in room, at room temperature, at, you know, S, uh, STP conditions. So, oh, sorry, cross out E. E is true, so it's not the answer. And so the answer would be D.